I just uploaded that video and I just have a couple other things that happened since then already, which is my friend died. She died last Monday. She was battling colon cancer for two years and she went a, an entirely natural path. She never stepped foot in a hospital except, hello cat, <laughs> except when she was first diagnosed, um, she was in the emergency room and they took out um, some amount of her colon and they also um, put a, a port in her and she did this in rural Italy. It was pretty barbaric. She said it was the most painful thing she ever went through. She wasn't even fully anesthetized, but you know, tragically she left behind two kids and we had another friend in our community who was 30 years old years ago who got colon cancer and the same exact thing happened. She basically lived two years from the time of diagnosis and didn't do um, anything conventional or allopathic. She did everything naturopathic, lived two years, died at like 30. Um, and then this friend was diagnosed at 40 and died by 42. Um, grief, it's just like, it comes in waves and I was just missing her a lot tonight. It's just, um, I got to be there with her, with her body the next day before the crematorium, crematorium came and picked her up and we cleansed and washed her body and anointed her with oils. And I wrapped her in this really beautiful silk sari along with one of her other long time friends. And we had a little circle around her and shared beautiful memories and stories about her and cried and we got to just have her body in the space that she's been in for the last two years and two months and um, just say some prayers and some memories and share ourselves. It was really beautiful. And then we're going to do a celebration of life for her in, in the middle of January. Her birthday would have been January 17th. That's been weighing heavy on my heart. It's just the process of going through grief. It's it's a big deal. And then recently I've been thinking about taking the aromatase inhibitor. inhibitor. I'm always talking about how I don't do it and I haven't been doing it. And even when I was taking it, I think I took it for like three weeks. I just, I couldn't do it, but I'm just really starting to think about doing it now because being triple positive, so triple negative and triple positive are quote, the worst breast cancers for various reasons. And one of the reasons for triple positive is because because of the targeted therapy with the trans, trastuzumab, however you say that, trastuzumab and pertuzumab, the, what are they? The Herceptin, wait, Herceptin, Taxotere, Carboplatin, Herceptin, and Pergetta. Because of the targeted therapy, women are living longer, which is awesome, right? But then more women are actually getting the incidence of brain metastases. I've talked about this before. I think it's called solitary brain, solitary brain metastases. So meaning that when the cancer spreads or comes back, it only goes straight to the brain. Whereas a lot of other cancers, the cancer can return. Um, maybe it's in the liver, the lung and the brain. But for some reason with her too, it can have a solitary brain metastases. And I read I read the statistic that said something like, I don't know, it was high. It was at least 20% of women, and I think even higher over time as more years pass by. Her two triple positive women, so it's her two and estrogen positive, um, something like 20% or may have been a little bit higher, um, will have a brain mets. That's one in five women. That's pretty high. And so what I also read was that tamoxifen, which tamoxifen is usually given as endocrine therapy or aromatase inhibitor for women who are premenopausal. Well, I had my ovaries out. I would have been premenopausal, but since I had my ovaries out, I was postmenopausal. They wanted to give me um, letrozole and not tamoxifen, but they said, if you have a bad reaction in response to the letrozole, you can do tamoxifen, but tamoxifen has a certain host of side effects and letrozole has a certain host of side effects. They're different. Maybe some are the same, but they also are different as well. And so I was just reading that tamoxifen actually is one of the few drugs that can penetrate the blood brain barrier because when a brain metastasis happens, 
one of the challenges, and I think one of the reasons, if I'm not getting this wrong, I hope not, I need to investigate this more, but um, they do radiation and they do um, radiostatic, is that what it's called? Anyway, radiation to the brain is just like, I, re I read a stat that said, I should link this article, it was incredible, actually, like a, you know, PubMed or something like that. It wasn't just like USA Today article, it was like a medical journal, so thorough. Um, I think I will. Anyway, um, so hold on, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I was saying about a lot of the chemos don't break, don't penetrate the blood brain barrier, but tamoxifen actually does. Taking the tamoxifen can help prevent brain metastases. I think taking the aromatase inhibitors just in general is, is trying to prevent obviously a recurrence, but that the fact that tamoxifen actually can break the blood-brain barrier gives that an advantage. Um, there was another drug, and it starts with an E. I can't remember what it was called, but that's another one that they give for um, women who are triple positive who have a brain metastasis. And I hate thinking about it so much because obviously I don't want that to happen. Who does? But it's worrisome because one of the reasons why triple positive breast cancer is one of the worst is because the timeline of a recurrence happening is such that like, with HER2 negative, I, I might get this one wrong, but a couple of the other um, breast cancers, when you hit that five-year mark, it's like a, a, it's a drop from, it's a steep drop in the risk of recurrence. You hit the five-year mark and phew, I made it, I might be in the clear. And I don't remember if that's um, estrogen negative. It might be estrogen negative, HER2 positive. Anyway, I can't remember, but with her with triple positive, it's still like for 20 years, you still have to worry about a recurrence. So hitting the five-year mark is like not, it's exciting, of course, but it's not like I'm out of the woods now. I've just been thinking again about taking one of their aromatase inhibitors because I just realized the importance of prevention there's like there's so much talk about the um, importance of prevent preventing cancer in the first place, and I really um, I really get that now. The fact that I'm NED, I hope I'm still NED right now. I haven't been. I guess the last scan I had was coming up on a year ago, which is a long time. And to stay NED feels so important, and to not have that recurrence versus having a recurrence and then dealing with trying to get rid of cancer again versus trying to keep cancer away. So one of the things, of course, that I didn't like about the aromatase inhibitor, and I think it was with letrozole, can't remember how it was with tamoxifen, I know accelerates like a lot of the bone density loss and I already have major osteoporosis and osteopenia, major already advanced. And so to take that would just be like, I'd have to probably then get Lupron injections or do something to offset the further bone deterioration. But the increase for uterine cancer risk, I think is like one, one to 2% a year. So in 10 years, it's like another 10, 10 to 20% risk of uterine cancer. It's just so hard. It's so hard. It's so hard to know what to do. And having just had my best friend for the last 22 years die from colon cancer. It's just like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just worried. I'm just worried about it. Maybe I'm not doing enough. And I've also gotten kind of lax in like just the amount of sugar that I'll eat and just, I don't know, just I'm, st I'm pretty good about taking my vitamins, although I was sick for a while. So I got lax about it, but um, I'm just worried about it right now. I also... I study Vedic astrology. I, it's not something I really talk about on this channel, but it's something I've studied for a lot of years. I don't know, 20 years or something. And I just happen to have an intense transit coming up with Saturn. And it's not really what I want this channel to be about, but um, it's not something I usually talk a lot about. But um, it's on my mind, basically. And it's just a little bit more on my mind. And I think just facing, facing how fucked up cancer is with watching my friend die from it and actually a year and a half ago i had one of my other really good friends die she's the same age as me from cervical cancer yes when they say oh that's a bad cancer or that's a good cancer nobody that has cancer ever wants to hear that but given that it's breast cancer and not another kind of cancer in a way that is like a better cancer 
I hate even to say that, but I just wanted to share that. It's on my mind. I don't know. I'm going to talk to my doctor and ask him. Well, the the doctor that I had at Medary Center um, talked about doing the aromatase inhibitor every other day. And so I had I did do that for a while, but I still just ended up stopping it. And then I think I asked my doctor about doing it every third day and or her or my oncologist. And it was like, that's pointless. It's pointless to do it. It's not going to help. Um, I am going to check in with him and see what he thinks about, I don't know, just everything I just said and get his opinion on it. But I'm just starting to finally get my platelet situation under control because I'm doing these self-administered infusions at home. And I'm just hitting like this plate, this place where I've got that under control. So I feel like I can, I need to go to the dentist, but I don't want to go to the dentist if my platelets are low. It's like, now I feel like I can start to look at other things, but because I've been dealing with this platelet thing and it's just been debilitating, I'm laying in bed now. It's like six o'clock, you know, I'm tired. That's one of the effects of it. But I just felt like I couldn't even address any health issues because I just needed to deal with my platelet, platelet situation. And now I feel like it's kind of under control. So I do want to like revisit looking at cancer and Another thing, I did a video like a long time ago about eating raw meat and that was like way early. It's like, you know, I don't know. I did that in 2018 or something and it's super controversial, but it's, but it's a lot more people are doing it now. There's something called a lion diet and I'm, I'm really interested in finding out more about it and really looking at it because I have read a lot and heard a lot about red meat it has to be like really high quality grass fed grass finished organic it's so expensive you know it's 19 dollars a pound for like really good meat that's what it costs at my local store for local grass fed grass finished organic beef nine it's 18.99 a pound so it's so expensive but supposedly it's the only like the studies out there are like processed meat and just swaggy gross shit meat that people eat like fast food and just going to the regular old grocery store and paying like 4.99 a pound for like horrible meat you know that's just industrially grown and processed and hormones and shit like that um and i do think that there's a lot of truth to that so i'm really wanting to look at are there studies out there for like extremely high quality meat because in the autoimmune protocol diet they beef is beef and i think like lamb it's ruminant meat so i think that's like lamb and beef and sheep i don't know definitely not pork or chicken so it's one of the only things that people aren't allergic to like when you think about it i mean there's people that choose to be vegetarian and stuff but People aren't allergic to red meat. It's it's allergy free. And isn't that interesting? And but the thing I want to look at is I know that there's like a correlation between colon cancer and eating meat. But again, I think it's eating highly processed, highly industrialized, like shitty meat that's out there. I don't think there's studies on really high quality meat. So I don't know if you know, there's a woman named Michaela Peterson. She's the daughter of Jordan Peterson, who's this incredible ma man out there. He's a professor, sort of intellectual. Um, not sort of, he is an intellectual. Anyway, his daughter is named Michaela Peterson. She has her own podcast. She has her own YouTube. She has, she, you know, she's out there in social media. But she was like riddled with tons of autoimmune disorders and diseases from day one, like from birth doctors could do nothing about it you know there's a lot of stories out there like this she she has something now called a lion diet it is red meat it's ruminant meat uh, salt and water like that's it every single autoimmune disorder that she had gone she her dad was having issue his issues gone she does a whole thing i mean she is so vocal about it and she's not the only one and I'm just really curious, you know, I, I know there's issues out there with red meat and the sustainability on our planet and stuff like that. But anyway, just another little tangent of something that I want to do a little more research on because I know that just like the standard American diet, which I don't know if I'm eating that or not. I definitely eat organic. Most of the time I eat healthy, but sometimes I don't. I mean, I've been eating turkey sandwiches lately, but I've been eating like the really high quality bread organic quality meat but still you know 
I don't know. I'm just kind of on myself, I guess, right now. So I'll just keep you posted if anyone's interested in that. I really, I'm very interested and curious. And if you have thoughts about it, you know, do share. I know I, I kind of don't want to hear from people, though, that are like just doing full on like vegan juicing and vegan diet because I know I know how prevalent that is out there in the cancer community and I'm very well aware of it and I think it has its downsides um so I'm just more interested in like you know is there something else to learn and something else that's available that might also be like more revolutionary and more cutting edge you know so anyway I'll keep y'all posted